Good evening, and welcome to the Sound Off program. My name is Linda Kirker. I host the show, and thanks for tuning in tonight. I hope all you dads out there had a great Father's Day this weekend. You certainly deserve it. <laughs> and um, made me think a lot about my own dad, who passed on many, many years ago. But um, dads and moms, of course, are are precious to our society and to our families, and so you deserve to be honored. And um, I also wanted to um, quickly just let you know, I don't think I've spoken of this before, that um, there's going to be another Liberty Camp for students, 6th, 7th, and 8th graders, in uh, July, the 23rd, 24th, and 25th of July, uh, in the mornings. And um, we have, well, actually, we had 16 students, but two of them, unfortunately, uh, their family situation changed, so they can't make it. So we're working on getting two more students, and the students are going to be participating in a wonderful program, uh, learning about the true founding of our country and why they, as young people, are very important to the future of this country and how important it is for them to understand all of the founding principles of this nation that give all of us rights and freedoms and opportunities. And so I look forward to that very much. Um, I love young people and I'm very eager for them to have a, a really strong understanding of what this country was founded to be. And there are so many forces out there these days trying to change those fundamentals that have made this country so great. And so um, I'm fighting back and um, hoping that our young people will have a good grasp and understanding of um, how important they are to the future of the country. So um, if you happen to know of a couple of young people who are in the sixth, seventh, or eighth grade, and, um, and they are eager, interested in learning about the founding of this nation, then um, give me a call. I'm in the phone book. Linda Kirker. <laughs> and um, so that's my opener for tonight. I would like to, at this point, introduce my guest, Mary Hahn Beerworth. Mary, welcome back. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Linda. Yes, I'm always happy to have you I'm here. I'm always happy to be here. Well, Mary is the executive director of Vermont Right to Life. She's been on the program before and always has a wealth of information to share with us about what's been happening in this state, in our state legislature, uh, in this uh, recently uh, finished legislative session. So um, with that, Mary, um, I'm a believer in right to life. I, I respect um, our, you know, the fact that we have life. And um, we need to do everything we can to protect it and for people of all ages. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that a lot happened in our legislative session that makes many of us very, very upset, if not angry. And um, I would like for you, if you would, to give us a little overview um, about what, what exactly went on. I know the governor just signed the abortion bill, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is very, very disconcerting for many of us. It should be for all of us, I think. Right. It was a piece of legislation that just is appalling. I think appalling and odious were two use, words that were used to describe this bill. So let's back up. You know, as the results of the 2018 election came in, it became very, very clear that there would be a supermajority of Democrats and progressives, uh, Democrats joined by progressives, taking over both the House and the Senate. About 75 percent approximately right, of right. each body. And of course, we know that the legislature is dominated by um, lobbyists from Planned Parenthood, the abortion business. And so early in December, both the House and Senate leadership announced that, that abortion would be the centerpiece of the 2019 legislative agenda. And they fulfilled that promise. Hundreds of hours of testimony and more floor votes on H57 than any other issue this year. Um, 
uh, took place. The, the, we're, we're actually documenting in the office all of the testimony on both sides and the quotes and the floor votes and also the comments. Wow. Uh, before the history books, because it was really something to watch. I bet uh, it, was. It, it was. It was. It was a fever for abortion that just couldn't be stopped. It was almost a little bit of madness. And, and this wasn't a somber discussion because abortion is a, is a somber, solemn uh, issue. The word is an ugly word. It is without a doubt, whether you're pro-abortion, pro-choice or pro-life, the worst day of a woman's life when she walks in and makes a decision under pressure most of the time from forces all around her to have an abortion. It's nothing to celebrate. And yet we watched the well-financed, powerful Planned Parenthood lobby group high five and laugh and cheer as they uh, managed to get their way. And it was a, it was disgraceful. I can tell you some of the things that happened. Sure, there was a little rally early in the session for for Planned Parenthood held inside the state house to watch a movie called Reversing Row, and they kicked it off by shouting, "Who loves abortion?" And the crowd answered, "We do, we do." This was inside inside the state house. Where where was the in room eleven? They had okay. booked room eleven. So are you saying, Mary, mm -hmm. that Anyone who wants to show a movie in Room 11 can get permission to do that? Oh, yes, you can. Um, room 11 just needs to be booked by a legislator. And, of course, you know, and as you'll probably recall from your days in the State House, if a, a member or a body or a committee of the legislature needs that room at that time, you would be moved. Right. But you can, you can use the State House rooms for your purposes. And, and we have also. Okay. So okay. that's fair. It was more the tone that was set early on who loves abortion. This cheering so outside of what the average Vermonter sees abortion as. Do you think that, um, mo was it all women? This was a Planned Parenthood rally. Okay, a but rally. was it all uh, women No, they there? have some men there too. Oh, yes. Do you think most of them have had abortions or? I, no, I think that we, what we saw this year is an exposure of what is really happening in the state of Vermont. So it's puzzling to you who could never imagine cheering for an abortion. No. But it is not puzzling for Planned Parenthood's employees and protégés. It's the business for them. It's the it's business a money maker. for them. And in fact, this was shocking to a lot of legislators. They're proud that they do 1,100 abortions a year in, in their Vermont. clinics, in their clinics in Vermont. So that was a number that surprised people. And that's 90% of the abortions that are performed in the state. So basically what they came to the state house to get this year was protection for their business. This H57 is an all-encompassing law. Try to imagine any company you know with the power to come to the state house, let's do Ben and Jerry's. And they come and they say, we want a bill where the state can never, never inspect our premises mm -hmm. or do anything to interfere with what we want to do. And that's what Planned Parenthood got out of this legislative no session. No protections. No protection and, and actually clear language that the state cannot interfere. Wow. I know, wow. So, so pro-choice and pro-life legislators who largely now are all Republican. There was one Demo one or two Democrats who- The pro-lifers, you mean? Uh, they, well, they were pro-choice and pro-life. Okay. The, the, the people who genuinely, so this, we've talked about this before, but for us, we categorize people who are legislators, pro-life, pro-life friendly, pro-choice, and pro-abortion. So we can work with all three of these designations. And we did. There are people who can't quite go all the way with us but they, but they really have care and concern for human life. Mm -hmm. In fact, the majority of the amendments were put up by a representative from Westford who self-identifies as pro-choice, but so appalled as a father and, and as a human being that parents aren't notified, that clinics aren't regulated, that we'd have no care and concern for ap the baby after viability, that he, he put amendment after amendment and fought into the night. Really? Oh, well, there was a fight that went on into the night uh, in the House, absolutely, and a fight in the Senate as well. This bill is remarkably anti-life. 
Prob <laughs> probably the most anti-life bill that has been passed in the country. That's sad. It's, it's, it's a, a disgrace. It was a terrible year. Um, so there's no need for a, an abortion facility to um, notify the parents of a minor who comes to a, a Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. to have an abortion. No, there's no uh, regulation that they do that, and they won't. Planned Parenthood will fight a parental notification attempt. So any regulation, any regulation of their clinic is taboo, and they have twelve clinics in the state, six of which will do abortion. Wow! So when New Hampshire passed a parental involvement law, uh, they immediately moved their West Lebanon, New Hampshire clinic over to Vermont in White River Junction because they are not going to notify the parents of New Hampshire girls. Is that in the bill? No, the nothing's in the bill. Parental notification? It, no, it, that was in New Hampshire that they passed No, I'm that. talking about in the Vermont. In age 57, there's nothing in the bill except a wide open, unregulated, unlimited abortion uh, uh, protection. It protects, it does nothing for women, and it, but it does, what it does is protect an abortion business, almost like a racketeering setup scheme. We brought in our good friend, of the whole Bennington babies incident where Patricia Blair lost her twins to an under the influence of uh, pres un prescription drugs, a young woman who had already been arrested for very similar, engaging in similar activity and she was on probation. But she once again had taken the prescription drugs, was higher than a kite and rounded a corner and hit Pregnant Patricia Blair. I remember that. Remember that. She had viable, 24 weeks along, much wanted, much loved twins. And the headline read, there are no fatalities as the result of this crash. <sighs> yet Just she, yet she held her babies. Yeah, and they were perfectly formed and beautiful, and they were so wanted. So she came to the state house, and she really let them have it. And she said, don't say this is a women's right to choose, Bill, because I chose to have my babies, and I can't even get recognition that they were human babies because you're more interested in protecting abortion. That's, that's awful. So 38 states have fetal homicide laws, um, and the federal government has fetal homicide laws. So if you uh, deliberately attack a pregnant woman and kill her unborn child... You can be charged with manslaughter or murder. If you're drunk driving and one of your victims in the other car is an unborn child, you can be charged. Those laws exempt abortion, and yet Vermont will not, in deference to Planned Parenthood, they will not pass Did a fetal homicide Did you say 38 law. states? 38 states, plus the federal government. Wow. So, so Patricia Blair came in to plead her case again. This is 10 years now. She'll never forget those little babies. Uh, you can look up Bennington Babies online and see the video. I mean, they, they, they had a beautiful photographer come in to memorialize those children, and the parents will never, ever recover from losing two babies in one crash. But um, her pleas fell on deaf ears. It, and Representative Ann Donahue put amendment in trying to amend to include a fetal homicide provision voted down. Wow. Parental notification, voted down. Regulations on clinics, voted down. Uh, information for women, including develop, fetal development, uh, listening to the heartbeat, voted down. I mean, it was a, it was an, it was an unusual experience, I have to say. There was no, there wasn't a tear shed for the most moving stories it was a blind allegiance to whatever Planned Parenthood wanted, and Hard they got it. Hard-hearted. It was very yes, it was. And of course, you I don't you haven't been there in years, Linda. But the one I, I remember one representative who tried to support one of these amendments, and he was a Democrat. Well, they immediately moved in. The leadership immediately moved in and told him, mm -mm, "You'll be voting right from here on." I can't. You know what? I know. I, I'm not anybody who would tell me you're going to vote this I way know. or that way because I, I can think for myself. Thank you very much, and I'm not part of a. Um, what would you call it? Um, a group that's going to vote gr a group approach? No, they're all individuals elected by the people to represent the people, and they should vote 
their conscience and what's in the best interest of the people they represent and the state at large, period. Well, Linda, I'm afraid those days seem to be gone by. Uh, I was very, very proud because almost to a one, uh, I think there were two breakaways, but the Republicans held their ground. There's nothing more I can say. I, we never were a partisan organization. We support Democrats and Republicans, independents, progressives. Mm -hmm. We even endorsed a progressive once upon a time at election time because he agreed with some of our initiatives. But now it's a lockstep. It's, it's lockstep. Well, I recall from when, mm -hmm. the years ago, when I was in the legislature, that it was pretty clear that the Democrats got the word as to how you should vote. Well, they not only get the word, there's a yes uh, or a no as you go by the majority leader's desk, and you, you are going to vote right or you're out. Wow. So... Um, <clears throat> So it was, but it was worse than ever with the supermajority. And, and also it's just important. I mean, they said it on the floor in some of their comments and, and you knew all along the underlying motivation was not only the, the wanting the endorsement of Planned Parenthood at election time. And by the way, they sent a threatening letter to all the legislators telling them they would either be voting correctly or they would, they're marking their vote at elect for election. So, wow. And they were going to watch uh, comments and amendments. But let's face it, the hatred for Donald Trump and the Brett Kavanaugh is what really fueled this fire. It just you know what? Excuse me. But these particular people don't seem to be able to get over anything. Take Hillary Clinton. She can't still accept after years now that she lost the election. I say, get over it, move on, grow up. Yes, and they also really lied because they said with Brett Kavanaugh now on the Supreme Court, there was going to be a case. There's no case in the pipeline to overturn Roe versus Wade. So it was a cocked up, exaggerated situation with the, trying to push a panic button that somehow Roe v. Wade would be overturned tomorrow. There isn't a constitutional expert in the country that agrees with that. And they even said as early as this spring, well, what case were they looking at? There's no case to overturn Roe, and there won't be for a long, long time. And Linda, the really ironic thing is, even if Roe v. Wade is overturned, Vermont would have legal abortion. There is no real threat to an overall right to abortion. We had a court case that was decided a full year before Roe called Beecham versus Leahy that already legalized abortion. So Roe, if Roe were to be overturned in that unlikely scenario, we would Vermont still, still have legal abortion. So what an opportunity age 57 was to take a look at how we can now bring some parameters and regulations. So my question for your viewers is what business, what entity is not regulated by the state of Vermont? Oh, uh, these people who are in charge now in the legislature, both the House and Senate, they never met a cause that they didn't want to legislate somehow. Any business that they could put parameters on, I tax, can't get over it. tax and regulate and constrain and constrict, but we now have one, and that is the business of abortion, which is nearly entirely the Planned Parenthood. Where's the freedom? You know, I recall distinctly, there are certain things that you hear when you're in the legislature and committee, health and welfare, which is what I was on, and um, learning about how not only women who had had abortions and then years later hmm. ruining that decision and just heartbreak, you know, just heartbroken because they're wondering about who would my child have been? What would they have been like? What would be been, been able to share as, you know, as a mother and child? And it's a loss. It, it is a loss. And, and I think women who lose a child at, at birth, stillborn, or in a car accident like Patricia Blair, or a miscarriage entirely, not, not their, their choice. fault, yeah. not their fault. But still, um, and there's an added extra sense of grief that you somehow made that decision. But 
it's my experience, and, I, and I've been at this for forever, and I know, I know so many women who've had abortions, and it's the saddest thing for me is that nearly every single one has said to me, Mary, I just felt I had no choice at the time. And so that makes me very sad, because, yes. and I really get angry when they say pro-choice, because never is a woman feeling like she has less choice than when she has not enough money, no support from the father, pressure from the family, possibly trying to finish her education. This mounts up to a tremendous amount of, of angst on her to take that step and then for her later to feel she had no choice. But that was one of the things we wanted to address because when you have a business of abortion, now let's try to conjure up, you go to your doctor who's taking care of you all your life and you have a chat. Maybe you have an older sister that could help with the baby who couldn't have children, wants to adopt your baby because he's not invested in you having an abortion. But Planned Parenthood, there are no other options at Planned Parenthood that they offer on the premises. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to get prenatal care there and you're not going to have adoption services there. And they don't show you an ultrasound. Oh, gosh, no. Because once you see that little baby living within you, then you're more likely to not want to follow you, you through. You would with be an more abortion. likely, yes. Yeah, but but the quick and easy answer. And now, listen. Let's take 1,100 abortions in 2017 done at Planned Parenthood clinics, times at least 500 to 550 dollars a piece, and do the math. And and a later term abortions, which they will do them up to 19 weeks. I want people to hear that right in their Burlington clinic. They do them up to 19 weeks at the hospital. No, at Planned Parenthood. Oh, Planned Parenthood. The hospital will go well further. But at Planned Parenthood, 19 weeks in a clinic situation. Now, that's just a few weeks shy of viability right there. So that's a fully developed and big, getting big baby. When, I've, I've forgotten, but I know it's very early when a heartbeat of the of the baby can be detected. Well, it can be heard at, at around six weeks, but the heart's been beating since 24 days, beating regularly and circulating the blood. Now, there's a rudimentary uh, blood system before that even, because that's how the baby grows. The blood has to be circulating. You know this stuff mm -hmm. as a nurse. But uh, the, the ha heart is actually beating at just 24 days after conception. But you can hear it with our modern technology at, at six weeks. Well, there's so, there are so many moving parts to this whole situation, so many aspects of it. And um, one of the things that struck me when I heard testimony years ago, um, and we've talked about this, Mary, um, when um, a young girl gets pregnant, mm -hmm. And she's scared to death to tell her parents. Oh, yes. So And uh, pressure from a boyfriend who doesn't want anybody to know. Oh, sure. And he can come up with the 500 bucks. They'll come up with it. If they need if to. If they can keep yeah. it secret. Well, they're looking at child support, so. So, you know, the girl succumbs and she goes and she has the abortion, unbeknownst to her family. Mm -hmm. And then... Things start to work on her emotionally, and she starts to behave strangely, and her parents are trying to figure out, you know, they have no clue what's going on with her. Right. But whether it's her hormones changing or her thinking process about what did I do, you know, and so then the parents are, what the heck's going on with our child? And then is the child likely to make some other mistake, like getting into a drug or something to try to, you know. Alcohol and drugs. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's a heartbreak. Uh, early sexual activity is, uh, is really difficult. A relationship breaking up, which often happens after the abortion. Mm -hmm. But we are looking at we're looking at women who felt they were making a fully informed decision later in life who have emotional problems. And now we expect a teenager whose judgment portion of her brain is not fully developed, That's neither true. is the young man involved. And so we are asking them to kind of carry something that is tough for anybody to carry and do it and keep it as a secret from their parents. So one legislator asked me, Mary, can you find out how many girls committed suicide um, who had a secret abortion? 
I said, I would love to find that out for you, but I can't because if they had an abortion and it was a secret, nobody knows why. Exactly. She, you know, so we're, we're covering up. And we're also covering up, let's face it, Linda, we're talking about human trafficking more than ever, and we're talking about the Me Too movement. So a young girl who's, who may well be being abused by a, by a powerful either older man or even just a powerful older high school student, um, and, and we're not looking to see what would, what would the father, what's the first question her father will ask? is who's the father of this mm -hmm. baby. So mm -hmm. then we expose abuse and criminal activity, potentially, and we stop that perpetrator from doing that to another girl. So we are missing an opportunity to protect our young girls, and we're doing it solely for Planned Parenthood. After what I saw this year, I'm not gonna hold back on them. I'm done. Good. They were the single driving force behind this. They, they're. Your payoff is at election time when you get their support. They will identify as pro-choice. And very carefully, they continued all session to say abortion care, as if that makes it better. Oh, that we really? offer abortion care. <laughs> and uh, I mean, caring for who? The other- Themselves. Yeah, they also said that they encourage their supporters to be loud with their affirmation that abortion rights are human rights. And abortion is health care, and abortion is compassionate care for human beings. So there couldn't be a more complete disregard of that unborn child. Speak, Mary, please, to planned parenthood. <laughs> Makes no sense. Parenthood is having a child and being a parent. And taking responsibility. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, as, as we've been chatting here, I keep thinking about, and we've discussed this individually or privately in the past, but how do we reach the young people to help them to realize that these choices are really critical in their lives and that they need to be respect, the girls need to respect their own bodies mm -hmm. and, and the boys have to have respect for the girl. Well, the other thing Planned Parenthood will oppose at every turn is any mention of abstinence education or delayed sexual activity and, and it, with an emphasis on getting your education under your belt and your career lined up. In fact, they're responsible for the sex education in the schools that it actually encourages people to. Well, I don't care to. what Planned Parenthood thinks, <laughs> yeah, frankly. But they're dom I know, but they're <laughs> dominating. Okay. They own the state right now. They All dominate. Right. How do we approach the school board as a group of citizens and say, if you can allow Planned Parenthood into the school, you can allow Vermont right to life. Well, I hate to tell you this, but because the school is a public entity, they now cannot, they can now favor books on abortion over books on pro-life. Why? Because as I was telling you before, I think, let me read it to you. Roe v. The H57. That um, was the abortion that's bill. That's the abortion bill. It restricts public entities from interfering or restricting the right to an abortion. We are wondering if there, we can even, I'm not sure, but it's possible that a school nurse cannot send a child to one of the care net pregnancy centers or alternatives to Planned Parenthood and must send them to Planned Parenthood. They can't interfere or restrict in any way. That's what the bill says. It is the most broad sweeping bill you can imagine. We have a caller. Caller, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? I wanted to publicly <laughs> thank Mary, as I do most every year, for <laughs> her you. great effort in the legislature this year, Mary. Mary, you did an outstanding job, and I very much appreciate your effort. Well, thank you, Jim. I'm, I'm, it's hard. It's hard to uh, do so poorly in the end. We, the odds were always against us, but we will document it for the history books. And, and I know you understand that the history books are not going to look kindly back on what happened here in Vermont. Jim. Oh, I, I'm not, I, I don't think I know either, Mary. I'm not smart enough to understand what you go through every day. Oh, it was rough this year because I'm not I'm only half done telling you what happened. <laughs> Jim, do you have any ideas on what we as citizens can do to change the course um, 
or, or find a way to at least get into the schools and talk with the young people? I, Mary, I, I wished I, I wished I knew Linda. You know, I'm at the point where, you know, they kept saying, wow, they're going to overthrow the, you know, Roe versus whatever it is, Wade. Mm. I'm at the point, go ahead, damn it, do it. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, they throw it, overthrow it. The best, to me, I would love that. Well, an overthrowing Roe only means you turn it back to the states to decide. So our state has decided. But there is something important you can do because it wasn't enough just to have legislation that uh, codified in state statute that abortion would be unrestricted and unlimited throughout pregnancy with no regard for the child. Do uh, people have any clue what they've done here, Mary? I think so. I think people are waking up pretty fast. We've had a lot of interest. But the, the thing, Jim, is that, and this is where people can step up, they also passed the beginning stages of amending the Vermont Constitution to enshrine yeah, yeah. abortion into that, into our Constitution. Now, that's a three-year process, so we need to inform Vermonters now. we got to start now about what they're doing. Leave the Constitution alone. Uh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Smarter people than I formed that. That's exactly right, and, and certainly, <laughs> I mean— uh, Certainly uh, our I mean, founding. I, I was beside myself all winter, and I didn't try to correspond with you, Mary, because I knew you were right out straight, but I knew you were working on our behalf, and I very much appreciated your effort. Well, thank you, Jim. I appreciate your support. The, I've always have been an admirer of your work. <laughs> well, you and I tried to win a seat, so we should, if we had been successful, <laughs> we would have been really busy. Yes, you would. Well, you were busy anyway. And we were, yeah, really out but, straight. So, yes. So this constitutional amendment, I just need people to understand, will be on the ballot in 2022. And so it will, but it's very deceptive because we asked them to clearly state that they were trying to enshrine abortion in the Constitution. And, and actually, the Attorney General's office and the ACLU agreed that that would be fair to the voters and that they should outline that it is about abortion, but the committee declined to do so. So the words are that an individual has a right to personal reproductive auton autonomy. Huh. And that's a very broad category. It's going to mean a lot more than just abortion, and we're going to have to start the educational process right away. Rep reproducing is yeah. having a child. And, and, of course, right. along with that, we might make a contribution and fund it. Is that correct? Probably, <laughs> yes. Well, yes, we're using I mean... using taxpayers' dollars the, for this yeah. nonsense. I mean, if you have a right to personal reproductive autonomy, then I think you have a right for the state to pay for a lot of things, you know, uh, a very expanded. Well, what more? I mean, we're we're paying for so many things now. I can't even believe that we're paying for all this child care, right. but that's because the government wants to control it. Right. So right. we have to get government out of the way. Get out government out of our way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is just pathetic. Well, we have people in this country that believe we can't function without them. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, Us, that's they their, stick their problem. Nose and everything. <laughs> That's their problem. From the performance of some of the leaders in that legislature this year, I uh, thank you. I don't need your help. It, it was rough. And we are, as I said before, we're documenting everything because uh, we're, there's a lot of attention now on the eugenics project that took place in this state in, back in the 1920s and 30s that targeted poor families for sterilization um, and rounded them up, put them in government institutions, and then uh, offered them their condition of release was voluntary sterilization. You know that well, you know what that means. They oh were, my God! They were forced. So there's all this attention on that, and at the same time, what are we doing? We're going to put abortion in our constitution someday. We're going to look back on that and and have as much disdain for that as we do for slavery and as we do for the eugenics project in Vermont. But they're full headed. They went straight ahead. You couldn't stop them. There was no stopping. So that really. The, the best thing we can do is elect people mm -hmm. who have common sense. That's right. That's so right. you two have to run again. <laughs> I, I don't think uh, I'm not I. Lose. Not I, Linda. Thank you. <laughs> I well, got it. I'll be willing to say I'll be looking for someone, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, 
You know how I stand if I was there. There's yes, no I question do. in my mind. I can't take this. I can't either. You would have had a really hard time <laughs> okay. listening to Thank this. Thank you for your help. I'll yeah. let you ladies go on with a good show. Well, and th- we'll watch it. Thanks, Thanks for calling, Jim. Jim. <laughs> See you. Bye now. Bye. He's a good guy. Oh, he is a good guy. Yeah. And, and he, when he was in the legislature, he was a, an excellent legislator, just as you were. And you represented your districts well. But... Um, so anyway, uh, so that's it. That's some of the things I wanted to share with you. This constitutional amendment, the H-57 would now have to be amended or overturned. But coming up for our chance to vote on it is, in 2022, is uh, this Proposal 5. It may have a different name by the time it's on the ballot, but it would be the first time that we've made a major amendment change to our Vermont Constitution. Now, they're talking at the same time of an Equal Rights Amendment and removing some of the slavery language out of the Constitution. So there will be several proposals. It's going Do to we be, have slavery? Yeah, there's some slavery language in the Constitution. Yeah. Passed. No, it was, it was already in there. Reference to slavery, and they just want to take it out. And so that's a, a, also going to be on the ballot in 2022. That's part of history. Yes, and there were people who made that argument. I'm just trying to say that we're going to have to be paying close attention to know which one to vote no on. Um, it may not be called proposal, proposal 5 by the time we get there, but remember the words personal reproductive auton- autonomy. And imagine in your head an equal sign and the word abortion. Because that's what we're talking about. Personal reproductive autonomy. Okay. Well, it's a sad day. It really is. It was a tough year. And so really, you can look at this legislative session, and they were right. They made it the centerpiece. Two major pieces of legislation running it on two tracks at all times. Two public hearings. I was delighted that pro-lifers turned out. At one pro, one hearing, about seven to one pro-lifers, wow. and another one, five to one pro-lifers. Fantastic. We had a, they were, you know the state house. They, were, they filled all the hallways, room 10, room 11, and the whole well of the house. Wow. Jam-packed. Fantastic. It was a really... Uh, people are rightly upset, and they, they, they honestly didn't know that there was no regard for human life in our state as an unborn child. Nothing. No, no regard at all. Death, creating a death seems to be okay in this state. No. I know. I know. I, I would think people would be up in arms. They, and they are. There are. I've had calls from people who, who are tossing and turning at night, then they want to know what they can do. And so... And so they did what they could. They called, they wrote. I know the governor's office was flooded with people saying, Mm -hmm. don't sign it, veto it, don't do it. And sadly, today on uh, on a radio program, Phil Scott, who once upon a time supported several initiatives, parental notification, shielding taxpayers from paying for all all abortions, and had some concern for late-term abortions, he rejected all of that very clearly on the radio today. He is, he considers himself 100% pro, he says pro-choice that translate that to pro-abortion. Absolutely. Yeah. So Mary, um, how are these abortions paid for? Let's say a young girl doesn't want her parents to know she's pregnant. She decides she's going to have an abortion and kind of just wipe it off the slate of her life. Who's paying for that? Her parents aren't going to. No, they can run it through her insurance, but then they would see it that way. Yeah. So um, they can qualify her for the Dr. Dinosaur program, which allows you to call your unborn child a family member and use the funds that you've qualified for now as for an abortion. Isn't Dr. Dinosaur for little children? It's for pregnant women and, and young children. Oh, my gosh. Yes, you can call your unborn child a family member. This is absolutely despicable, but that's what's happening. So we pay between... Medicaid and Dr. Dinosaur, we pay for about a third of all the abortions that we were just talking about. So a third of 1,200 abortions are covered now. We're under court order to do that. Um, I, I suspect under this constitutional amendment, we would have to pay for all of them and possibly even under H-57. Uh, our insurance companies do cover, I think all of our insurance companies cover abortion at this point. So one way or another, that abortion is paid for, and, and a third of them are paid for out of our taxpayer dollars. I know it's just stunning. 
and and all of these things just uh, were no concern, no no concern at all to the legislators. Wow. And I'm telling you, Linda, I witnessed sitting in the committees and the excitement about H57, like the like excited. It was appalling. What is wrong with them? I have no idea. Are they all getting paid by Planned Parenthood? Well, they're wedded to Planned Parenthood's philosophy. There's no question about that. And Planned Parenthood's been working toward this day for years. They have, because they draw down tremendous dollars from the federal government under Title X, and we give them three hundred thousand a year just in for Vermont. Vermont. So that that stacks up their business. Just had an idea. <laughs> Let's have a a big uprising about taxpayer money in Vermont not supporting Planned Parenthood. Why should we be paying for that? I have no idea. I have no idea. And it's a $300,000 gift to do whatever they want with, pretty much, to run their business. I mean, there are a lot of good causes for that money. And it's buried so far in that it's very difficult to find, but I do have the, you know, the evidence. It, so it was under Howard Dean. Uh, he was afraid they would lose their Title X funding under Ronald Reagan, so he went and preempted that possible move, which never happened. And and he ordered the government to our government to give them four hundred and fifty thousand. And a fight on the floor reduced it to three hundred thousand. But they've been getting that money since the early nineties. And so so when when you get to have that kind of a base to prop your business up, I mean, what carpenter, what what any business wouldn't like to have about that much money to just <laughs> run? And so then they go out and they raise private dollars at election time, and they are a significant force. So they spent four hundred and fifty thousand dollars against Phil Scott four years ago, saying, calling him an anti-abortion, blah blah blah, and it but and it worked. He won, but now he's not going to risk. Uh, their wrath. So they weren't successful in unseating him, but they were successful this last week in getting him to sign that bill. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mary, it's really, it's heartbreaking. So, uh, so, well, let's switch to good news. Okay, let's have some good news. <laughs> so uh, with the hospital now doing abortions. Oh, I, that's good news. Uh, no, no, it is, but it is. So I, I had suspected that our numbers of abortions would rise for the first time now since 1985. I thought, well, when they've opened up a, a big deal, abortion set up in, in the UVM Medical Center, and I highly encourage people to express their outrage about that to Absolutely. the Absolutely. Don't go there. <laughs> and don't donate. But um, instead, our numbers dropped again. So it went from about 1,278 to just around 1,200 in 2017. So believe me, what our main goal is, we go and defend life in the state house, but the main goal is that those numbers go down. Okay, but we have fewer children. I know. We have a low birth rate anyway. No. And then you add abortion onto that. I know. And then where is the state going to be? We're going to be all old people like me. If we stay here, if we stay. may not have old people either. <laughs> yeah, anymore. because they're leaving. Well, it's it's a sign of success. So just for our listeners to understand, in the 1980s, we had 3,500 abortions a year in the state of Vermont. And those numbers have steadily, steadily dropped. And they're a real drop. It's not that there are fewer women or, you know, there, it's, it's factoring in infertility rates and everything. And so even though that's high for a rural white state like we are, it's still, they're dropping. And so I take great encouragement. And when that number hits zero and Planned Parenthood's out of business, that'll be our day of victory while they're enjoying theirs now. Okay. Now you said there are 12 Planned Parenthood clinics in Vermont. That doesn't include the hospital? No, right. Plus Medical Center Hospital of right. Vermont. Now, now, and that compares to our neighbors. So it's Planned Parenthood of Northern New England. But our neighbors in New Hampshire have five Planned Parenthood clinics at twice the population, more than twice. And Maine, with more than twice the population, only has four. So well, we have an incredible situation here and that, that is out, it's out of control. Do you know if New Hampshire and Maine... Um, do those states uh, pay Planned Parenthood like we do, $300,000? No, they just get, I believe they only get their 
federal Title X allotment. And that goes to other providers as well. So the, so the amount for Vermont is probably about, it's 1.5 million for the tri-state. We get about 800,000 because we have the most clinics and then the rest is split between the other two states. But they, that money also can go to other women's health care providers, not necessarily abortion providers. You say again, 12 million? No, no, oh. 1.5 million. Oh. The fed Annually. federal money. The federal money is 1.5 for the three states. We get the bulk. We get the lion's share of that, and then they split the rest between Maine and New Hampshire. So, um, okay, Vermont gets most, and they have so they have alternative places for you to go. So Planned Parenthood of Vermont is going to keep that money coming in, even if the Title X money is taken away from them for performing abortions because there's no alternatives in Vermont. Planned Parenthood has been allowed to dominate the abortion scene. Okay. <laughs> and then they call themselves healthcare providers, but <laughs> don't go down there looking for your mammogram because that ain't going to happen. <laughs> and they are largely, they say that 6% of their business is abortion. Well, that's, that's not, that's an exaggeration too. So an abortion is several steps, your blood test, your consultation, your return visit. And they, so that makes it look like a, a smaller portion of what they do with the actual abortion itself. So, so. It, they do mammograms? No. Oh. No, no, I was no no, I said don't go looking okay, for your mammogram. Okay. So what do they do for health care? Um they will they're It's not related to abortion. Abortion, yeah. Um they do treatment of STIs they call them. The it's STDs? so that's significant. Well, they used to say sexually transmitted disease, but that infection? they felt they now they say infection. Yeah. Um and so then and birth control. I they do a lot of the uh, the LARCs, the long-acting reversible contraceptions, that they, that's main, those are their main three things. But doesn't that kind of, if they're giving contraceptives to people so they won't get pregnant, supposedly, then aren't they defeating their whole purpose of doing abortion? Well, the contraceptives fail. I mean, the long-acting ones, you know, most likely don't. And they, I, I think they're pressuring girls to use those. But the pill, more, we have talked to more girls who were taking the pill and got pregnant. They lightened the dose of the estrogen and progesterone that's in there because it's really, that's a, that's a lot of chemical hormones going into a young girl's mm -hmm. body. So mm -hmm. they lightened that up because there was some talk of strokes and things like that. So that makes it less effective at blocking a pregnancy. And of course, condoms are, are relentlessly unreliable. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, years ago now, the, what's that? Consumer Reports magazine flunked Planned Parenthood's manufactured condoms because they were so unreliable. Yes. They make condoms? They did. They do. Yep. Oh, boy. Yep. They've rebranded them now, but they you can look it up. I'm not telling you a lie. They flunked their two brands of condoms. Sure, because they want pregnancies. <laughs> it's just, it's oh someday, the, someday the world will know. Um, and, and Planned Parenthood is very close, was, has really deep ties to the eugenics project in Vermont as well. So I have no idea why we can't seem to get liberals who love people, who want equality for everybody, who want equal treatment under the law, to so completely dismiss that human being in the womb with no regard. You know what, Mary, I've said this before. Equality under the law as pertaining to our founding documents means that we are considered equal under the law and we're considered equal in the eyes of God. But that doesn't mean that you have all equal outcomes. Right. But right. But your value as a human being. Well, it's our, I work for the Vermont Right to Life Committee, and that name comes from the right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. The right to life is the first right, right. without which nothing else can possibly matter. Right. And so I just, I don't understand how we could be here. And I don't understand that, I can understand a solemn acceptance of abortion in hard cases, I guess. I could have an understanding for that. But high-fiving and cheering for a piece of legislation that has zero 
regard for human life. And I've been on a number of radio shows and I point out that we have a salamander crossing in Addison County. <laughs> we have a salamander crossing in Addison County. I mean, think about that. And we can't say that when that baby can survive outside the womb, it's time to say we're balancing the rights of the mother with the rights of that unborn child. Mm -hmm. She still has choices for adoption. Right. I mean, the choices are there. Exactly. But the, the choice to just so gruesomely kill an unborn child. I have another one for you. Um, there's an abortionist at the hospital who came down to testify. And before the Senate Health and Welfare Committee, the chair asked her what ethics got. Uh, this is after describing uh, how D&E abortions are performed, which I'm not going to do on this show. But she said, what ethics guide you? And she said, and I am not kidding. I have it on tape. She said, do no harm guides my ethical principles. Do no harm. This was someone from Planned Parenthood? This is someone from the medical center who does abortions. Do She's a hired no abortionist. Harm. Yes. She does D and E abortions, which are done in the second and third trimester. That's dismemberment, right? It's a dis well, it is. It's a dilation and evacuation is the exact term. But yes, they will dismember that baby and put it back together again. Because I read somewhere where a physician from the medical center testified mm -hmm. and spoke about dismembering babies. Oh, yes. Babies. She did assure the committee that she... Um, ended the baby's life in one of two ways before starting that process. But that is, you're pulling out arms and legs, yeah. And she said her ethical principles are do no harm. So, I mean, I- <laughs> That's a joke. We have lost our way so incredibly. And, 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 and the committee's nodding. I mean, this is what we're I wonder we were what the good Lord's thinking right now. It was quite a year. Now, uh, I will say, that at least Phil Scott went behind closed doors and signed the bill. Oh, goody. Well, in New York, Governor Cuomo lit up the World Trade Center in pink. Oh, yes. Now, we have to stop and think about that because the names of those who died at the World Trade Center on that horrible day, September 11th, uh, include the babies of the pregnant women who died. Yes. And their names are on those on the wall along with everyone else's The names. baby's names? The baby's names are on the wall. Good. And he lit the World Trade Center up in pink. Look, where, where are we as a society, Mary? We're it's, in big I mean, a, a, we are in trouble <laughs> we are. because the, the respect for the things that really count and matter in life are, are being destroyed somehow. Um, I, respect and uh, work ethic and life. I mean, if, if you have, according to the founding documents, the right to life, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. then how is it okay to do abortions? And, and celebrate and cheer. But Vermont has uh, now got a pattern of being the first in the nation on almost any radical idea. And it's very important that people understand that's what you're voting for if you vote for a Democrat candidate, because it's nearly impossible to swim against this tide in the state house. Uh, one, one Democrat from Bennington stood up and opposed in opposition, and one really, really excellent legislator from Springfield, his, uh, uh, Mr. Forgites, but he, he died right after his vote. Yeah, really? Yeah, but he had stood up against his party, and that's really brave at this point. So it's important that we know that these issues matter, and and it's going to matter to you in one way or another. You can think, well, it's a woman's choice. Nope, it's going to be your grandchild. It's going to be your daughter-in-law. And there's these are issues that they struggle with. They are mental health issues. The ramifications for this go on and on and on. In their on. lives. And, and it's time to just wake up on the subject. It matters. And, and I'm saying that some of these legislators who do not identify as pro-life and yet fought this bill are very worthwhile supporting again. This is a real test of metal and character. So how do people find out? Um, now, the, um, the Chronicle mm -hmm. 
um, that Guy Page has oh, put yes, together. Oh, yes, the State House Chronicle. The State House Chronicle. And, and Vermont Right to Life's newsletter will have the vote count for everybody in okay, the next issue. Okay, because I think, I think that's in here. It is. Um, is this all Senate? This is Senate. Folks, um, last week um, we talked about the Chronicle, the State House Chronicle, but what a great resource. It is. You can access that. Um, Not sure if that issue, I think it might be the issue before this one, but we will have that vote. The vote count is available through us. Anybody's on our mailing list is going to get that, I think, by this weekend and, and a lot of stories Good. about what happened. But, uh, yeah, we're going to be letting you know on both subjects, on the Constitutional Amendment and on uh, H-57 so that you can be educated at election time, and which is still a year off. And we'll see what more damage they might do this year. <sighs> this next coming up here. Well, you're making me very glad that I'm not down <laughs> there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I truly want, I wanted you to be on the program. Thank I, you. I also, like Jim, respect you a great deal. Well, thank you. And I, I can't imagine how hard it is. It was a tough year. And now we're going back and transcribing all the testimony, so we're listening to it again. All and it's over. really a heartbreaker because a lot of mistru mistruths were told. And, and we need young people in this state. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, we need to recover a sense of what matters, and family Absolutely. matters more than anything. Absolutely. Uh, I, 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 yeah. We need strong families. We do. And we have, now we have drugs, and we have, mm -hmm. you know, young people into viping, vaping. Vaping, excuse me. yeah. But the human trafficking thing is on the rise, and we really need to be very concerned about that and, and take a look at how we're leaving our girls and boys to just be abused by a culture that is obsessed with sex. Yes. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of things to fix, aren't there, Mary? It really is. <laughs> are we going to be Mrs. Fix-It? <laughs> All I can do is try, and we tried. I will tell people who are listening that we gave it everything we had. We met them head-to-head, toe-to-toe. We brought in experts from, uh, we can testify by speakerphone, so we brought experts in from around the country. I bet you did. Chairs of OBGYNs, um, experts on post-traumatic uh, stress, uh, post-abortion stress, um, we we knew they weren't going to hear us, but we needed to make it part of the they official record. They just wouldn't record. listen They're because their listen. minds were made up. Were the made facts up. don't matter, right? We we're couldn't move do what their we hearts. Do. At, yeah, we just couldn't move their hearts at all. Yeah, that's sad. Yeah. when you have physicians come in and oh, others pleading, you know, pleading, and and women who've had abortions. And Patricia Blair was the most heartbreaking to me of all. Yeah. Yes, I believe that. Well, thank you for the opportunity to tell people oh, what went on. <laughs> well, thank you for enlightening us all. And um, folks, um, I hope you learned a lot tonight, and I hope you're disappointed with what went on in the legislature regarding this issue and other issues as well. Um, we have a lot of work to do um, in this state, and the best way to fix those problems is to elect people mm -hmm. who get it and who will stand up for what's right for life and for opportunities and for work ethic and, and for excellent schools and so forth. Um, we need all of those things to make this country, this state for starters, uh, a place where we're proud to live and make contributions and so forth. And uh, Mary... I, I, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm actually really honored to have my job, I have to tell you, and I'm proud to stand there and tell the truth. Somebody needs to Somebody do it. Somebody needs to do it, and I would love to come back as things get closer on the Proposal 5. Okay. And there will be a, an organization set up to fight that, and then we'll... We're going to need funding and support and volunteers and petition drives. So don't think there isn't work to do out there because there's going to be. <laughs> well, and feel free to make a contribution to Vermont Right to Life. They do really great things. They're working hard and uh, have for years. Mary has been phenomenal. And um, so don't hesitate to uh, make a contribution for life. And with that, we're close to closing up a shop for tonight. Uh, I'll have 
some great guests the next next week again, and I think you'll be intrigued by uh, what you'll be learning again next week. So with that, I'll say have a wonderful week ahead, and I will see you next week. Good night. Mm-hmm.